It's good to be here, Elizabeth. Thank you for having me. It's great to have Josh Balk in the house. In the house. So uh, literally in my house, this is my backyard. We decided, you can hear the birds, right? We decided we would do it outside and sort of take advantage of all that L.A. has to offer. So you hear the dogs, you hear the birds, uh, maybe the fountain, who knows? But you might also hear the sound of us chewing because we have some great food today. Delicious. Josh, okay, I hope Josh is going to be okay with this. So this is what I made today, people. I realize it maybe looks a a little bit funky funky but um it's not so it's brown rice how super easy is this uh red beans mm -hmm. roasted asparagus and roasted spinach and then i just like tossed it all together with some lemon so so super easy and so super good Josh, tell protein me what you think. packed. Protein packed. We got a lot of vitamins. Yes, this is how we roll. Micronutrients, yeah. fiber. I mean, this is a meal that will extend my lifespan by at least two years. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Awesome. Well, we want you on the planet, so that's a Fantastic. good thing. Fantastic. Okay, well, tell people what we think. Mmm. It's mm. very good. It's okay. It's very, very good. Mmm, I'm so glad. I love it. Mm. You can really tell the lemony flavor. Oh, I'm that's so absorbed glad. by the brown rice. You know, it's funny. I'm not a huge asparagus fan, which is a little bit of a bummer. And um, so I've been trying to find ways, because I found this great asparagus in the grocery store, and so I'm trying to find ways to work in more asparagus mm. in my life. And I finally found a way that I like, because I don't like it straight up. You know what? There's always a good reason to get more asparagus in your life. And here we go. We did you it. We see? found a way. So well said. This from Josh Bulk, whom I'm so happy to have with me. You are... VP mm -hmm. of farming. Farm Animal Protection v at the Humane Society of the United States. So tell me, for everybody who may or may not know, what does the Humane Society do? I mean, I think everybody knows that they care about animals, but what does that we mean do. literally? And then what do you do in that mm -hmm. umbrella? So the Humane Society of the United States is the largest animal welfare organization. Mm -hmm. We work with... Uh, the U.S. Justice Department, state and local law enforcement on animal fighting issues. Mm -hmm. We work with Homeland Security and FEMA on natural disasters like earthquakes oh, and yeah. hur hurricanes and, and other types of disasters that, of course, harm animals. And people with pets, too. Uh, we work with state wildlife agencies to use you know, humane wildlife solutions to be able to solve conflict issues without harming the animals. You mean like deer overrun, yeah. et cetera? Okay. Right, exactly, exactly right. Uh, and we also have a big thriving division that I happen to lead called Farm Animal Protection because we believe in protection of all animals. And that includes animals raised in food production. And when you look at the number of animals who we interact with in our society, by and large, the ones that we harm are the farm animals. Mm -hmm. So they certainly need a lot of help, and it's a big organizational priority to help them. And we're very proud of the work that we're doing so far for them. So this is what I find amazing about Josh, whom I've seen on many occasions. You are so incredibly happy. <laughs> <laughs> and you have a very tricky job. Tell me exactly what you do as VP of Farming and Animal Protection. Uh, well, uh, well, you only see me around you, and I'm happy around <laughs> you, so maybe there's a correlation there. Don't we love him? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. You got it. Uh, so we have three divisions on, on my team. Uh, one division is called Food and Nutrition. It's to work with the largest food service companies on the planet to add more plant-based meals to their menus. So as an example, a Compass Group, it runs a dining operations at 10,000 accounts across the country oh, wow. at colleges, universities, hospitals, baseball stadiums. And so we work with them to add more plant-based foods to those menus all across the country so people can incorporate more of those plant-based foods into their diet. Mm -hmm. We have professional chefs on our team who make sure Yay. the food is delicious, just like the food I'm eating here today. Tell if you, if only him. anything we can eat, provide is as delicious as this food will be in good shape. <laughs> uh, and we also, uh, on the plant-based uh, side of things, we work uh, individually on these culinary training programs programs where we actually train directors of dining and chefs on how they can make plant-based foods because mm -hmm. a lot of the issue is that the chefs just don't know how to do it. And so we teach Amazing. them how to do it. So that's one yes. that's one third of the team. Another third has to do with corporate policy. We work with companies like McDonald's and Walmart mm -hmm. and many others to enact uh, policies to eliminate the worst practices in their supply chain. Uh, Egg-laying hens can find in cages, mother pigs can find in crates, right. veal calves can, can find in crates. And while these major suppliers of these products might not listen to you, Elizabeth, as they should, no, they're not or me, me, but they will listen to Walmart. 
and they will listen to oh, yes. to major grocery stores that mandate right. this shift. And so we work with Love those that. type of, of companies to enact those policies. And finally, the third division is public policy, and that's to make sure the worst bills don't become law that harm animals. And we want to pass laws um, that are actually very good for animals. And that's a lot of the work that I know you and I have been working on together here in California. Yes, we have. And I want to get to that in a, in a minute. But I, I just want to delve deeper a little bit into what you said, because I think for the average person, they think like, oh, certainly I wouldn't want to be cruel to animals. That's something way over there. That's not mm-hmm. something I have a, a role in. I like animals. Yeah. I'm not cruel to them. That's this issue way over there that I'm not involved in. So... Why should people care about this issue? Well, I think most people care about animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, most people don't want to think that animals are suffering or in pain uh, or in situations that just far uh, object to our, our moral concern yes. for other beings. And I think it's just a human thing. I think most of us feel that way. Mm-hmm. And so most of us, if we see a dog come into your lovely backyard here and, and who's kind of struggling in pain, sick, injured, almost everybody be like, okay, we got we to gotta help this help dog. Help him. Exactly. Now, what if these animals were suffering, but not in your backyard, but they're suffering behind the closed doors of the giant warehouses and suffering not by the dozens or the thousands, by the millions and billions. Millions. And I think that, you know, that calling will drive people to ensure that, listen, That's just not right to Mm -hmm. harm animals no matter where they're harmed. And everything we've seen so far in work passing laws for farm animals, as an example, it doesn't require us to motivate people to care. People do. They really, they really do. It brings so much hope to what we all care about. I'm so happy to hear that. I didn't know that that was the case. I was very doubtful maybe that that was the case, but... They do care. They do care. You know, all the polling shows that they care. Okay. Uh, all the, the market research shows they care. And frankly, most importantly, uh, in terms of like tangible ways to know consumers care, are the, the votes that have been cast in favor of animal protection laws from everyday citizens in ballot measure states like Florida, Arizona, California from many years ago, Massachusetts. All these states had ballot measures where people can go out and vote on the animal side. They're given arguments from a big animal agribusiness saying I it's not so good yeah. to, to listen to people like you and me. Uh, but you know what? At the end, they take the side of the animals. And these are states that are purple states, red states, blue states. They vote Republican, Democrat, Independent. But the common theme is that, you know what? These don't want to see animals abused. And is it possible to not see animals abused and still eat a full, healthy three meals a day and not be hungry and all this kind of stuff. I mean, I sort of know the answer to this, but I want to hear it from (laughs) your side, from the animal protection side. I mean, does protecting animals necessarily mean that we don't get what we want as humans? The the wonderful thing about helping animals is that there are so many good things that come from it. For us, I think. For for us, for, For, for 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 a whole lot, you're right, you know. Obviously, for the animal's sake, it's good to make sure they're not suffering. That's yes. pretty common sense. But what goes beyond it is that when you help, especially farm animals, typically anything we do to help farm animals makes the planet more sustainable, it makes the planet healthier for animals, frankly, us too. Uh, also, moving away from eating animals, uh, as, at least as much as what we've been doing in the United States, actually makes us healthier. Much you know, study after study shows that moving away from eating as much meat as we do in society and focusing on plant-based foods, like the lunch that we're eating here today, <laughs> reduces to our chance, exactly. Eating this type of food, eating this lunch, <laughs> reduces our chance of heart disease, mm-hmm. cancer, stroke, diabetes. These are leading causes of death in the country. And what we really just have to do is switch to eating healthier. And that healthy food happens to typically not contain any animal products at all. And, you know, I've been vegan uh, for almost 20 years now. It's Awesome vegan. <laughs> awesome vegan. Uh, thank you. Thank you. I hope I tried to be at least. Um, and so I've been vegan, so it's been about uh, 17 years, so I'm getting closer to my 20-year anniversary. And I can tell you, you know, I was raised eating everything. Sure. I was raised eating, were. you know, from, from my dad who did you know, great job raising me and, and my brother. And, and, you know, he was just feeding us what we asked for. And right. typically it tasted great, but it was really bad for us. Uh, and it certainly was not good for animals or the planet. I just didn't realize it at the time. 
And so I know what it's like to eat that stuff. And now that I switched to eating you know, plant-based and been vegan as long as I have, I got to say like my energy increased, yeah. my asthma dissipated. Uh, you know, my doctors are thrilled about my health outlook. And, you know, I used to play baseball. We've talked about this yeah. when we first met uh, a long time ago. And I got to say, like, injuries are healing faster, uh, especially when I'm getting older, that it's a lot it's a lot more important to me now that I'm not just in aches and pains, you know, for weeks and months on end. So, so it, there's a lot of benefits for me plant-based. Sir, may I ask you your age? 38. Woohoo! Okay, so still, we're still, you're still in the like, out there tearing it up. You still play baseball, maybe a little bit. You know or? what? I, I, I tore my shoulder in college, oh. and so I can't throw baseball very much anymore. But I still like to, to try to exercise as much as I can. I used to play football a lot just with friends and basketball. So I try to be active. Yeah. Uh, not as much as when I was in, in college uh, or high school before, but but I try to get out and do things. Not so much, uh, not, not in as much of an athletic way as I used to. But I think back in the day, I think in college you were a bit of like a baseball hero. Isn't there an award that's given every year for somebody who can throw like Josh Balk? Well, there, there, there is extraordinary. <laughs> there is something called the Josh Balk Pitching Award in my high school. That is true. How awesome um, is that? But you, you know what? I think it was my dad who created the award. He's the baseball <laughs> coach at the time, so I, th- I had I had some some biasness in cre- in the creation of the uh, award. It's all love, people. It was love. It was love, no <laughs> doubt about it. Um, but. Uh, I was pretty good a long time ago, a long time ago. The further I look back, the better I was, I think. (laughs) What I love about this little stat is that as stereotypes go, people always think, oh, well, you know, if you care about animals, it's a bleeding heart girl Mm. thing. And I think there are many, many men who love animals, who really want to be athletic, who want to pump and Mm -hmm. realize that it's so much better for their own health. And they're kind of quiet. They don't feel like they have society's blessing to come out and be like, dude, I eat plants, and that's what I do. But I think that is changing. I think as you see more and more people who are athletes and very athletic and want to stay healthy, and it's it's not just that it's better for you. I recently interviewed the directors of um, Eating You Alive, which is a great film. Mm. And they were saying, well, it's not that we're living longer. It's that we're dying longer. So we're around for a long time. And if you're not paying attention to what you do, that means you're on pills for a good one third, 40 percent of your life to uh, combat diabetes and heart disease and these sorts of things. But if you just take out meat now, you know, a lot of that goes away and you don't have to live your life on pills. And I think that's a huge incentive. Yeah. You know, I I think you're right that plant-based eating, uh, I think it has been adopted more by women than men. Mm. Uh, and I think that for whatever reason, I think there's a lot of, you know, reasons regarding evolution that women happen to be more compassionate in so many ways. Uh, and I think, I think men can catch up on that trait. Uh, but I think what's starting to happen though, is that that men are starting to see the real severe health concerns that they're facing by eating the diet they have. You know, no one wants to go out and see, you know, their dad, you know, suffering from ailments because of his diet. And then looking back at themselves, like, am I going to be my dad as I get older? And I could have changed it. And I could have changed. Exactly, exactly right. And, and especially when, you know, when people start having friends and families and developing their life, you know, it's like, is continuing down a path that's going to cause me to be sick right. you know, for years on end, and and not just sick and causing pain for myself, but also, you know, my choices are harming others. Right. You know, they're going to be the ones that are going to have to take care of me because of my own choices. Right. And so I think a lot of people are self-reflecting, and a lot of, a lot of uh, everyday men are self-reflecting, thinking, you know what, maybe I should start eating more plant-based food. So I, yeah. I agree with you. I think it's starting to change. Yeah, and I gotta say, shout out to uh, all the men that I love. I think they're there. They just haven't felt like society gave them the blessing, and I think that's going to quickly turn around when society realizes, oh, it's financially better for all of us that you all go plant-based. So we're going to switch what we said about yeah. being masculine, and we're going to say, more power to you, real men go plant-based. So I think there's that. And I also think that, uh, you know, no shame in this game, right? We all grew up on meat. So, like, we get it, or at least, uh, yeah, we get it. Yeah. So, you know... What you did yesterday, we're not talking about that. We're talking about how to move forward and how to make that the best for you, the planet, just because there's so much waste that comes from animal agriculture. So the roll off of chemicals into your soil, into your water, into your kids' water, uh, you know, boy, we really need to 
if you care about your kids' generations, then that's a conversation you're interested in. Uh, so there's so many reasons to just be like, okay, whoops, what I did yesterday is over. But now going forward, there's this thing I really want to get into, and that's being plant-based. Oh, you know, it's it's never about looking back. No, totally you know, agree. It's always about looking forward, and, and every day is a new day. Yes. Uh, yes. And so why not just all of us? I mean, I certainly can eat healthier. Uh, I mean, I can certainly be more effective and advocate for animals. So... So why don't I just try to look at each day and say, you know what, I'll, I, I respect what I've done in the past, perhaps I've done my best, but you know what, I can do better. And, and I think that's something that all of us can do. And, yeah. and listen, I think you said the right word, humility. It's not about being perfect. No. It's not about trying God, no. to yeah. try and defend a status quo because we have some type of pride of, of who we were. And so we just have to maintain it no matter what facts are presented. I think it's the humility to think, you know what? I think that I have more of a responsibility to, to behave in a way that I think better reflects my own values than perhaps I was even accidentally before without even knowing. Right, right. And, and, I, and you know, and I think that what people appreciate are those who are like, you know what, I learned this stuff. You know, I've, I have the opportunity to actually make changes. So I'm going to take some steps. And for me, it's about taking steps. It's not about asking people to go from zero to 100 overnight. It's not asking people to be perfect. You know, I think basic steps like, listen, you've never thought about do meatless Monday. You know, do vegan before 6 p.m. You know, very basic things that don't require you to change everything overnight, but at least incorporate things. And you know what they'll find is it's a lot easier than they thought. And I think that's when people stick with it. It's totally a lot easier than you thought. So definitely hit me up. You can find me on all the social medias. Hit me up for some recipe suggestions because this was so super easy, mm. people, and very filling. It's so very good. And uh, there's, there's lots of other th- ways to have, like... Um, Ethan Brown was just on this podcast from Beyond Meat. So there's like, if you want to go straight burger, there's options for you too that are plant-based. Um, but I, I just want to go back a, a little bit and say, um, again, n- ain't no shame in this game, people. So we're all moving forward. And perfection's a big fat bore, honestly. Like yeah. it's a, it's like way over, over, uh, overblown, overblown, overrated, overrated, overrated. It's, it's, it's all of it. It's yeah. all of it. So perfection's a huge bore. Like do what you can. So Meghan Markle is vegan Monday through Friday, but then on the weekend she's out with whatever and she's got lots of in- engagements, things to do. So, <laughs> you know, uh, there's, she's a busy gal and whatever. So we're all making progresses and progress. And if for you, it's Mondays, Monday it is, you know, and if it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, awesome. Or if it's just dinner, awesome. Or if it's just lunch, whatever. So, uh, any, any progress is progress. Any step forward is a step forward. But you're a pretty happy guy. I'm a pretty happy girl. Uh, I know that you see a lot of real, real horror. And, you know, I don't want to bring anybody down in this podcast. But what can you share with us? Because, again, I think people say, I've closed my eyes. I don't want to see it. So I'm just going to pretend it's not there. What are some of the things that animals are up against regularly, all the time, not an exception, but actually every 10 minutes of their life. Okay, we know they're confined. So a lot of people say, well, they're animals, they're meant to be confined. Okay, but that's not really the Mm -hmm. bulk of how bad it is. Right, you know, I was an undercover investigator, so I saw this stuff firsthand. I actually had to participate in it. And, you know, (laughs) video doesn't do it justice. You know, being there, you got to see, you know, the agony in these animals' lives. you know, for me, it was looking at one chicken. So I, I did investigation in a chicken slaughterhouse. And what I would say is that when I went to work there and I was hooked up with a hidden camera and needed to document the abuses that were happening, there's so many chickens that come in because it's rapid fire. It's like shackle, shackle, shackle. It's how fast uh-huh. it goes. So what I did is look at one chicken uh-huh. and I just looked at one individual. It's like, okay, what is, what is her life? And what is her death going to be? And I saw her falling down a conveyor belt, being dumped from the truck, looking around, scared of not knowing what's happening. Her legs are, are, are crippled because of the genetic ma- manipulation that these poor chickens in the meat industry are forced to undergo. Then she's What shackled. he's saying there is because they make them grow such big breasts so quickly that <sighs> they can't walk. So she is completely crippled. Exactly. You're exactly right. And, you know, the, the, the breasts, the wings, they're just not... They've not been programmed to carry this extra unnatural weight through the genetic manipulation that the poultry industry has done over the years. And so she's already in constant pain and she's shackled a painful process to to anyone, especially these animals with legs um, already that that are in pain. Uh, She's looking around and, and then she, you know, goes through the slaughtering process. And, you know, looking at her go through it, the amount of fear that she went through, uh, the amount of misery that I'm sure she, she had in the, her lifetime. 
it made me realize is that, you know, we're dealing with these individual animals. Mm -hmm. They all matter. You know, if, if they lived in our yard, they would have a name. Right. Uh, oh, they'd live in our yard. They'd live in our bed. They'd, they, they'd, they'd sure be at our you, they would. Oh, they would. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Come on now, people. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so so I, I, th- I think of it this way, is that imagine one individual egg laying hen in this instance being confined in a barren cage so small she can't spread her wings her whole life imagine seeing a chicken in a microwave and then that's her life that's basically kind of the life of an egg laying hen where most eggs come from right. or a, a cage where a poor mama pig is oh. put in her whole life where she can't turn around and you know scientists found that you know pigs are smarter than dogs they play video games better than chimpanzees yeah this is how we do treat mother pigs and, and and calves race for veal putting them in a crate so small they can't turn around and this is shortly after the ripped away from their mother after they're born. So that's the sad part of this podcast. Uh, We'll move to happier things, I know. But that's something just that that helps fire me up to know, like, I got to make a difference here. We can't sit back and let this continue. Yeah, I I completely agree. And obviously we are animal lovers, but I'll just go ahead and and bring it back to to you if that's like too much to take on. Because a lot of people feel like I cannot fix the planet today and I cannot fix animal agriculture today. So like this podcast is a lot for me to take in. All right. So just fix what's on your plate uh, a couple times a week because you ingesting all those chemicals, so not good for you. You ingesting all those antibiotics to make that that chicken completely unnaturally four times its weight, not good for you. All that fear, all that anger, it's right into you. It's right into you. So none of that's good for you. So just kind of think about if you want to, you know. It's your life. Do whatever you feel like. But you know yeah. what you said. You know, I find it really empowering because you know, so so many sad things in the world. I mean, we're all hit with news, and typically mm. news is about very sad things. And most of the things you know, that cause us pain when we look at the news and and, and just angst. Uh, it's things that we probably can't do too much about at the moment in time as individuals. Yes. Uh, and, and, and it actually hurts more because we're just disempowered. Yes. But for animals, it's the opposite. We are fully empowered because every meal can make a difference. Right. And so just by eating a breakfast that is plant-based, is that step? And that's a great step that yeah. will affect animals and starting to yeah. shift in this direction. So yeah. that's a, it's a very, it, it's, it's a, it's a feeling like, you know what? I can make a difference and it's simply by doing something I have to do anyway and that's eat and just choose, choose better foods. So I love this and I'm going to steal it and I'm going to use it from my podcast from now on because when so, you, I'm just going to, um, paraphrase again, with so much of what's going on in the world, you feel disempowered. Here's a place where you're actually empowered. And it's so easy to make that change with your wallet. And I say with myself, if I learned anything from the last election, whether you're on the right or you're on the left or you're independent or you just didn't vote because it's so gosh darn overwhelming, wherever you stand, you know that we really vote with our wallets. So everyone's going to the ballot or they're not going to the ballot, but we really vote with our wallets because none of this happens if we're not funding it. So these big corporations that are churning out animals who are living and breathing as if they were widgets, which is never going to work, right? That that never works. Uh, We fund them. So as soon as we stop funding them, Things change. So. Yeah, I, th- I think so. We're, we're starting to see change, too. Yeah, st- Are we? Tell me about that. Yeah, I feel optimistic. Of very course optimistic. you do. You know? Of course you do. <laughs> I mean, it's just the truth. But, you know, fortunately, I think we're moving in a good direction. And, yeah. You know, the sad part, for sure, is just the overwhelming numbers that we feel. You know, there's billions of animals, and we can't picture what billions is like, right? Um, I think there's a statistic. There's 7 billion people on the planet, and we kill 70 billion a right, year right. for food. 10 times our own number. It tells you how much we're eating, how sick we're going to be, how much waste and there is. And that doesn't is. even include uh, animals uh, from the sea either. That Those are land animals. Uh, oh, and and so um, so that's the, that's the, the really bad stuff is the number of animals and the conditions of living. Horrible. Horrible. Right. Um, the, the good news is, is the following. One is that we're passing more laws now than ever before to eliminate the worst practices. Uh, for farm animals. You know, we're abolishing the confinement of these farm animals in small cages where they can't move their whole life. Awesome. Thank uh, you. We we are working with the major corporations who years ago, they never even had any animal welfare policies. Right. Now companies like Safeway and Kroger and any other major grocer or, or food service company, restaurant chain you can think of has policies to eliminate eggs from caged chickens. I have I have a little piece of your delicious meal. In my okay, throat. well, so I mm. will take it from here, people. I'm back. Oh, yeah. I'm back. 
I move fast. <laughs> so, so let me add to the other good stuff, and it relates to the food, actually. Okay. So there is more of a variety of plant-based food than ever before for everyday people, at least in the United States, and actually it's growing throughout the world. You know, when I was becoming vegetarian, eventually vegan, I would have to go like the natural food store to find like a veggie burger or soy milk. You know, I, I used to make cereal with orange juice. Like that's how pathetic I was years ago. Die um, hard. Yeah, die hard and also and also silly because I don't know if I really encourage anyone else to follow my diet when they watch me do that. <laughs> yeah, right. um, but now you can go to any mainstream grocery store in, in the entire country and they have these type of plant-based meats. They have plant-based chicken and bacon and sausage, and the list goes on. They have vegan cheeses, and they have a whole section of plant-based milks from all different types of plants that we never even probably knew they could even produce milk many years ago. So all of those things are a sign of hope. And the last point, you know, really quick on that question about hope, is that even major meat companies are starting to see the writing on the wall for how the status quo is shifting. I mean, major meat companies are now investing in plant-based companies I to love that. diversify their portfolio a bit, but also they wouldn't do it if they didn't see the market demand shifting in that direction. Right. And so I kind of equate it to, I mean, we're in lovely California right now. Right. And California has been a hotbed of, of creating cleaner cars. And, you know, I think what experts in the cleaner car technology would say is that it wasn't when a, like a niche company would figure out how to use electricity for cars. What really turned uh, for the car industry is when big manufacturers started to say, wait a second, we have to get involved in this too, or we're going to be passed up upon. And now every major car manufacturer has cleaner cars. And that's what I see now having, having happened with the media industry. So we're in a good path. We're, we just have to keep going, and we got to keep this. pushing faster. I love this. I love this. So just to reiterate what he said, most major meat companies get that the market is shifting and that they are going to be way behind the eight ball if they don't get into the plant-based business. So we vote with our wallets, people, buy more plant-based stuff, and that's how we're going to see the world change. And yeah. you're going to eat like super great stuff along the way. Like, exactly. is that not a win-win? Okay, so I've got a couple tip questions for you. Maybe you can help us out. What are the top three things we can do to help animals? Mm. Well, the first thing we can do is look at our own diet. And if and uh, you know if we're meeting eating uh, meat, eggs, and dairies, to kind of look like what changes can I make in my own diet? And you know, we talked about it already. Shifting to eat more plant-based foods—that's the, the first thing. Uh, the second thing is that, you, frankly, if you want to make a bigger impact for animals, we can't just do it ourselves. We can't just look at ourselves mm -hmm. to make the change. We have to bring others involved. So, mm -hmm. so what I would do is is encourage friends and family to start looking about the path that you're changing to now. It's like, you know what, get friends over for a, you know, a delicious vegan potluck and just like, hey, come on over. If, you know, you don't have to bring food. I'll make it all. It'll be like a one person potluck for everybody else. That's what you do. And, and when people come over, they'll be amazed by the delicious food. Then the conversations start over delicious food, and then people can start changing that way. Friends, family, you bring it to you know your place of worship if you happen to go there at school. You just, we have to spread the word. It can't just be a solo thing. We have to get everyone else to do it too. Uh, and, and finally, the third thing I'd recommend is you know, join in a farm animal protection organization. Let's see what's going on. Yeah. You know, whenever, I hope it's the main side of the United States. Follow us. You can go to on our Facebook page and like us. You can follow me on Twitter and join, join our organization. But there are a lot of other groups, too. You know, there are groups out there that focus on farm animals. You get their newsletters, get their action alerts, see what's going on. And, and then when you see that, let's get active because we have to be active for animals. Yeah, I t completely agree because we have a voice. And again, I think lately with the election, <clears throat> there's just so much going on. People maybe feel like they don't have a voice, but you do. You're actually super, super powerful. You have a voice. You vote with your wallet. You vote at the ballot. So um, the Humane Society of the United States, Definitely go like and find on Facebook Josh Balk. He's a sweet guy, you can see. So hit him up on social media and uh, do whatever you can do if it works for you. You know, no pressure. But if you can get out there twice a year and get signatures or change things or have people over for vegan meals. I mean, I had vegan Thanksgiving and that worked out great. Everyone's super happy. So and they couldn't believe it was vegan, which is usually yeah. what people tell me. So um, give me, thanks for those tips. Give me a, a quick um, understanding of how and why you went vegan, and then maybe three tips for people to get on the bandwagon. Uh, I grew up with dogs, uh, and my dogs were, were named after athletes. Uh, and so one dog I had 
Hector, he was a big St. Bernard. He was the size of a, a bear, to me at least, when I was growing mm. up. But you know what? I made this connection, though, that so many people had, is that, you know, I, I was with Hector and I saw a documentary about how animals are raised for food. Uh, and it showed the practices that we talked about earlier in the podcast, these poor animals being confined, they couldn't move, and the suffering that broiler chickens go to in the meat industry. And I, I thought to myself, you know what? If anyone tried to abuse Hector, I would jump right in front. Mm-hmm. I would do anything mm-hmm. to save him. Mm-hmm. Yet all these other animals who feel the same pain as Hector, who have the same spark of life as Hector, mm-hmm. they don't have any protection. They have no one standing in front of their abusers. And that's when I started to kind of look at what I was eating. And I just decided, you know, like, I don't want to be part of that. So I started, I became vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then a few years after that, I became vegan. And so it was really looking at my dog they, they got me to, to enlarge in my circle of concern for, for all animals. I love that. And I would just <coughs> say, hashtag make the connection. Pigs are smarter than dogs. They're really social animals. They have very strong social bonds. Cows have incredibly strong social bonds. So ripping away baby cows from mothers is so incredibly cruel. And we do it every nine months. That mother is pregnant her entire life, which is like the extent of running nine miles a day. She's just producing, producing, and then just goes through postpartum, postpartum. It's just, you wouldn't do that to any, I don't know. It's just horrible. So, uh, yes, I agree. Well, thank you for doing that, and thank you for those tips. Okay, so um, how do, do you think people can go vegan, and what's their, like, first, or did I already ask no, that? No, 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 I didn't okay. get to it yet. No, okay. no, 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 you're good. No, you're good. <laughs> So uh, here's what here's what I recommend. And this comes from the someone who was I didn't know anyone who's vegetarian or vegan. So I, I feel like I have a pretty good pulse for anyone out there, no matter where they are in the spectrum. Because I was as far as you can imagine eating meat, eggs, and dairy every single meal. Uh, what I would recommend is. Uh, Go into the grocery store and start buying some of these plant-based meats mm-hmm. and seeing which ones you like. Because frankly, you're not going to like them all. Oh, right. There's okay. some, some people like some, others like others. Yeah. Um, but I would just you know fill up your shopping cart with all these different new products out there. Every major grocery store has it. You know, and just give it a shot and pick the ones you like and start incorporating that into, into your diet. Uh, and that's that's the first thing I would do. The next thing what I would do is is set like set like firm time frames of when you're going to do it, hmm. just to make sure you have a schedule. So let's say you know, so you know like the meatless Monday thing we talk about, like be really committed to it. You know, I had a, a, a dear uh, friend of mine who was uh, my roommate in college, and he was veg- he was vegan. I'm sorry, every Monday. And then after two weeks, it was Monday and Tuesday. And, and after two more weeks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and it went on and on and on until now you know, he's vegan. And what he did is he had it on his calendar. Like he was serious about it. And he kept with it. And he would say, you know what? That really helped me because it really it, it enlarged my understanding of the foods that I can eat. I got used to it. And frankly, I get more enjoyment out of eating the plant-based foods because they're more exciting. They tasted better than the old school stuff I would eat my whole life of, of meat and, and yeah. the other stuff. So that's the second thing I would say. And finally, the third thing is to go online and just check out like the vegetarian and vegan restaurants in your area because you may be surprised how many there probably are. I mean, we're in California now. I mean, there's, there's all a over the place. Yeah, gazillion. Exactly right. And most major cities across the country have, have vegetarian and, and vegan restaurants. And at minimum, they have vegetarian, vegan-friendly restaurants right. that make it super easy. And so that way, you, when you go out to, to dinner, just give things a shot. So those are the three things that I would recommend. So I love this. I would agree. Start slow, so no pressure. Don't make it impossible on yourself. Just a little bit of change is always good. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of change is always exciting, right? Because I think what I found when I went vegan is I had forgotten about all these other foods. I wasn't eating them because I my food world was actually super small. It's funny. People say like, oh, well, if you don't eat meat, what are you going to eat? There's so many other choices and I had ignored them all because I was eating meat. And so my world is actually much larger because I have sweet potatoes and eggplants and asparagus and all these other things I'm working in that I wouldn't have given the time of day. Yeah. I would have been like, nah, I'm going fat. I'm going animal fat. <laughs> I'm going cheese. I'm So, you know, that that's one is that you're going to find when you open your world up, it's going to be a really diverse place Two, get on that schedule. Just pay tiny attention to how you feel after that mm-hmm. vegan meal. Yeah. And that day, and maybe the next day. Then go back to meet, whatever, do your thing. <laughs> and you're going to see how you feel 
after that, mm-hmm. I think you're going to notice a lot of people say they feel a lot better, noticeably better. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. You know, after a meal, it, we shouldn't be like so Ugh. so exactly right, so filled to the point of not be able to move. Right. And and just needing the point of like going to sleep afterwards, like that's yeah. that's not good. No, that's not a good thing. We're no. so used to it because like that's just the way we've been eating for so much of our lives. We should feel good afterwards, right? You should feel energized, energized, rather than like, uh oh, I've got this dead stuff rotting inside. But I'm sorry to be gross, but that's literally what it's doing because it it takes forever to pass through your system, so it's literally kind of rotting there. Okay. Uh, what are your top three responses when people say, I can't give up meat? Uh, one is that I used to say that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so you can. He's living proof. Exactly. Two, I would say, hey, w- assuming it was a friend who said it, I'd say, come with me. I'm going to treat you to some I'm gonna treat you some really good, delicious plant-based meat. And he, how can you turn down free food? Come on. Right, I agree. No friend does. Yeah. And so I, I take him to a grocery store, pack him, pack him with all this uh, different type of products I think that he would like. And, and then... And then finally, well, then I take him out. And it's like, it's on me. I will go to this restaurant together. It's on me. You won't pay a dime. You might hate it. But guess what? You're not going to have to pay for it right. at all. I'll do it. And I think just by being proactive about it in a really friendly way, non-judgmental, uh, I think that's how we can draw people in. And I think just frankly, just remembering how we started, because I know I went through like an angry vegan phase. Oh, okay. You know, like when I became vegan, I was like, I can't believe you didn't, you don't get this too. And right. I was just, I was just angry at the world for not understanding what I understood. And that was the most ineffective approach <laughs> yeah, you could ever yeah. imagine. Who wants to be around <laughs> someone like that? I didn't want to be around myself. Right. Uh, and so eventually I started to realize, frankly, what fits my nature better, fortunately, but also it's more effective is that just being kind to people and by just helping people out and not having such an urgency with each, each individual that if things don't happen overnight for your friend, your family member, or anyone else, it's not the end of the world. It just takes some steps and yes. it's okay. We'll get there. We'll get there. I totally agree with this. So every once in a while I'll get something like, oh, veganism is super expensive and stuff. And I just say like, woo, hold on there, people. Because, uh, you know, you're already paying with your taxes. You're paying to subsidize meat and dairy. And then when you're sick, you're paying for that too. So I would argue that meat is very, very expensive. Um, but if you can't, if you're vegan and you sort of can't take your friend out or whatever, Hit me up, everybody, because I've got a gazillion recipes. Find me on socials. I will lay out your whole week of vegan options. And you just pick, you know, one or two or three that you want to try that week. So there's lots of ways to cook inexpensively at home. And it's not even cooking. It's like rice over here, Mm -hmm. sweet potatoes in oven over here, mix. No. And I mean, there's other stuff. There's spices and stuff, but not hard cooking at all. So Yeah, I mean, this lunch right here, I mean, we're talking about rice, beans, and vegetables, and lemons. This is so affordable. Uh-huh. And yet, it's, it's delicious. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a better lunch than most people are eating right now. Mm-hmm. And yet, it's affordable, it's plant-based, and it's actually healthy, too. And it'll, and it'll fill Woo-hoo. you up in a good way. So, yeah, this is a clear example of, of, of what we can do for others. That's why I'm still eating, people. <laughs> I am, too. Okay. I'm halfway through. I have a couple quick questions for you. Yeah. What item are we always going to find in your fridge? Well, obviously just mayo. Of course. Oh, my gosh. We didn't even talk about that. So he really puts his money where his mouth is. So (laughs) it's not just, I don't know, you have such a busy life. It's not just that he is with the Humane Society of the United States. You also co-founded Hampton Creek, which is now Just. Mm -hmm. It's called Just. It's just called Just. Just. Tell, Tell us about Just. Uh, well, years ago, uh, I, I founded a company called Hampton Creek at the time, named after another St. Bernard I had, Hampton. That's right. My St. Bernard's have played a big role in my life. <laughs> <laughs> the loves of your life. Exactly The right. many loves of Josh. Exactly. St. Bernard Hampton. And Saint Hector. Bernard Hector. Exactly. All started with H and former athletes. <laughs> so um, so Hampton was a, a he, was, you know, he was the sweetest dog of all time. He never barked at a human his entire life. Never did. I don't think he actually barked at another dog. He might not have ever barked well, ever. Was he deaf? No, no, he was not. <laughs> okay. He just loved, he just had filled with love. He could love everybody. Yeah. Um, so um, so he passed away sadly. And, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I know you know the pain of, of mm-hmm. losing an animal. It's God the worst feeling. Mm-hmm. It's the worst feeling. And I went through that darkness. Um, and it was, you know, during that time that I was founding this company with my best friend since we were kids. His name is also Josh, Josh Tetrick. And we thought of this idea, like, you know what? what? What would it look like? 
if we can make food for everyone. Mm. I don't care what your diet is. It just happens to be delicious food. It happens to be affordable. It happens to be convenient to get. Awesome. Oh, but by the way, maybe you didn't notice, but it's all plant-based. And it's good for the planet. Whoops. Okay. Yeah, it happens to help the planet, <laughs> Earth, and our, and our health a lot and better animals, comparable yeah. to, the, to, to what it's replacing. And so it's with that thesis that we went forward you know, with that general concept of disrupting the food industry in that way. Uh, and uh, so I'm very proud of what the company's done. So I've been a Humane Society States for 13 years. So Josh, and I give him so much credit, you know, I found it with him, but he, he stayed on to be a CEO. It's done a phenomenal job. And they have different flavors, mayonnaise, salad dressings, cookies, cookie dough, and they're just launching just scramble. So even scrambled eggs made from plants. I'm all over this. I have been <laughs> waiting for scrambled eggs made from plants. It's amazing. Thank it's, you, people. This, this, is, this, is, uh, this is shocking the chef world. They can't believe it. There's so many videos of chefs who are like, I'm never going to, to use a product like this, eating it. Boom! And they're just in complete awe of what this product is. So it's making a big impact. And uh, and so I'm, you know, it's something that I, that I hope... Uh, leads a type of legacy out there in the world that not only will inherently help animals itself, but I think it's helped pave the way for other companies to get funding to launch their own yes. products that are plant-based. Yeah, the world is a change in people because in terms of the tech entrepreneurial space, there's so much money being poured into clean meat and or plant-based meat. People are really getting out in front of this. So what we see today in our everyday lives of like, oh, I don't know, I got to think about it. Maybe meat, maybe vegan. I'm not sure. Believe me, other people are thinking way ahead. And five years from now, that's what's going to be out there is plant-based this and plant-based that and more just yeah, products, absolutely. which we're looking for. So no that's pretty awesome. It. Okay, so you travel a lot with the Humane Society in the United States. So, so you're on the go and maybe your refrigerator isn't always filled with everything you would like because you've been out of town. So what's your go-to fast meal that you can always make? super easy, super quick, and it's always going to be good. Mm. You know, I've been making smoothies now a lot more than ever, uh, and uh, I got a Vitamix, uh, and you just stick, you know, like a whole bunch of fruit in there. Yeah, so uh, great. And you know, I can even, I, I, I even throw some beans in there because you don't taste it. Because He's cheating! I know, exactly <laughs> right. Some of these things, like you want, you want everything else in your system, the vitamins and, yes. and the nutrients, but you kind of want to cheat a little bit, get in you without really noticing. You stick in a blender with a bunch, a bunch of fruit. And, and all of a sudden, all you do is taste delicious fruit smoothie, and all these other things are in there that snuck in. So I would say a smoothie. And I'm kind of, I come to California a lot, as you know, because I'm working on the Prevent Cruelty California campaign that you, that you were active on. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for that. And you know, this is the most far-reaching uh, belt measure in the history of our country for animals. If it passes, it will be the most far-reaching law in history of the world for animals. What will it do? So what Prevent Cruelty California would do, and if you go to the website preventcruelty.ca.com, what it would do is this. It would ban the sale, again, the sale of eggs, pork, and veal from caged animals. So imagine this poor egg-laying hen in a cage so small she can't spread her wings, and she's laying eggs for California marketplace. Well, let's make a minimum standard that no eggs from caged chicken should be sold in the, in the, in the fifth largest economy in the world. Yes, happens to be California. love that. Mm -hmm. Let's have the same type of rule for pork. You yes. can't confine mother pigs in, in these poor, in these gestation crates. You're not going to be able to sell in the marketplace. Same thing with veal for many calves raised in these tiny crates. So no place on the planet has a law this strict for farm animals. So that's why we're going to face a lot of opposition. Okay, so just to recap here, preventcruelty.ca.com. CA .com. It's coming up in November, November mm -hmm. when we all go to the ballots, which we will. And this would be the most far-reaching law on the planet. And what it does, and I will say, you know, even if you're a meat eater, you're not a meat eater of tortured beings, right? You're a meat eater of hopefully healthy beings. So even if you feel that you want to maintain some meat a couple times a week or whatever you do, we can all get behind. Things need to be able to move, walk, breathe, particularly if you want to have anything to do with them. Uh, so this would allow pigs, calves, and chickens to have enough room 
to move around. No cages. No cages. Mm -hmm. No cages. That is so flippin' awesome. And that's the reason we do this podcast. Please vote, everybody. I'll be voting. I know, I know I'll you will. I'll be voting. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I have no doubt yeah. about it. And then if folks can do what you've done, I mean, take part of the campaign. I mean, even just going on the website and making a donation. I mean, we're going to be facing millions of dollars of opposition right. money from right. big agribusiness from the Midwest. Yeah. And it's going to take people who just care about animals to say, you know what? I'm not going to stand for it. I'm, I'm going to back the campaign filled with animal folks taking on the big, powerful interests on behalf of the animals. Yeah, and I, I really feel this. I am an animal lover through and through. But I'll just say, I vote on this kind of stuff because I care about people. So if you think that um, you know you can't go into these big factories and see what's going on because there's all these laws against cameras. You can't see what's happening to workers either. And it sucks for workers yeah. because if you need to be pushing cab calves and chickens and pigs so quickly through really dangerous machinery, they're not capturing the abuses that happen to, to workers either. And then of course, um, who benefits from you being sick by eating all this meat? It's not you, people. It's big business. So, uh, yeah, if you care about yourself and staying, staying healthy, mm -hmm. you really want to vote on all this stuff. And then, of course, who wants to vote? Everybody wants to vote against torture. Absolutely. I think we know that. So, Absolutely. So, okay, favorite junk food, if you eat junk food. Popcorn. Oh awesome. My gosh. Okay, how do you make your popcorn? Microwave. <laughs> okay, but I mean, like, what do you put on it? You know, typically... Um, it typically, it already comes seasoned because I'm so terrible in the kitchen. Okay. Which, again, shows that anyone can be vegan because I basically <laughs> yeah. know how to do very little in the kitchen. <laughs> I know how to turn the microwave I on. I can use the microwave. I can op open up cans of beans, put vegetables. and uh, You know, I can do stuff like that. Um, but uh, if, if, the, if it's not flavored, I'll throw some nutritional yeast on there, throw some pepper on, gar on there, some garlic powder on there. That's the stuff I would do. But typically, it comes to the type of flavoring, so I don't have to do any of that. So I'm going to say that he's pretty healthy. I, I always do extra virgin olive oil and then oh, rock yeah, salt yeah. and I'm very happy with that <laughs> uh, we all know the answer to this but it's on my standard question do you have any animals now and do you think there are any pets now and do you think they're any different than farm animals you, you know I, I don't have pets now uh, I grew up with with dogs. Uh, I, I travel a lot, so I think I'd be a deadbeat dad to some poor animal in my my small apartment in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, so um, I allow myself to enjoy all of the dogs who are at the humane side of the United States. We have a dog and a workplace policy. Don't you love it? And we have dozens and dozens of dogs all across the office. Uh, and uh, and I'm kind of like the f I like to think I'm like the fun uncle where I can be f I can have a good time with the dogs and they're excited <laughs> yes. to see me but I have no responsibility whatsoever. <laughs> it's uh, a good gig. It's a good gig. And so I'm going to stick with that gig for a while. I had a plant and I had to give them my plant. Um, <laughs> my plant is thriving in our head of PR's cubicle right now and is taller than ever. Uh, and so I think the only life in my apartment when I'm not there might be some you know some bugs. ants, yeah, yeah some ants <laughs> or bugs or something like that. Um, but regardless, to, to your other question regarding hay or our pets at home like farm animals, and the short answer is yes. I mean it's arbitrary that we view you know, dogs and cats as pets, and we view you know chickens and pigs uh, and fish and goats and other animals as, as animals to kill for food. Uh, you know if you if you ever go to farm sanctuaries mm. and you get to know the animals, you'll see they're just like the animals at our home. Some like to get scratched. Some like their belly rubbed. Th there are chickens out there that will hop on a stranger's lap just to get her neck scratched. You know, there are, there are cows out there that g go up to the sides of buildings just to cr scratch their side as if we were like scratching the side of a dog at mm -hmm. home. And so when you look at these animals out there, they're all unique in their own personalities. You know, everyone is an individual. Uh, and you know, I think that you know, sometimes you know, when we rightfully are outraged by the dog meat trade that is happening, and yes. the Humane Society uh, of the United States, the Humane Society International, or International Arm, is fighting so hard to end that trade. And I'm so proud of my colleagues for the work they're doing on it. Uh, I hope to abolish that trade completely. Uh, at the same time, as we look to do that, I think it's also good to reflect on, hey, how are we treating other animals who are being raised for food? How are we treating the chickens in these warehouses where they're unable to move because of genetic manipulation? You know, how are we treating the pigs who never take a step outside? You know, how are we killing fish who, we, you know, we're suffocating to death? And I think that if we kind of have the basic notion that all animals should be free from pain, that we should show kindness, respect to all living beings, 
I think we can come to a really good place. And if, fortunately, again, I think it comes down to our eating habits. And that's a, that's a great way to start, and, and we can go from there. So I, I so agree about this. I think what's interesting about the dog meat trade in Asia is we're all horrified by it. And if you're not familiar with it, um, in many countries in Asia, they put dogs in basically flat rectangles so they can't even stand it's not that they can't turn around they they can't even stand they're basically in like a a cinch Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah and and then they um hang them and eat them is that right yeah yeah they that's that's how they slaughter them yes they hang they hang them and eat them and we all think like that is barbaric but then we do the same to cows and pigs so something to think about there that um uh, but you yeah. know what? I look at it in a good way. That you know, I, I know that you know. There's a feeling you know of you know frustration if it's like, hey, why do you care about these dogs and not the farm animals? I look at it in perhaps, perhaps maybe a reverse way of like, hey, thank you for caring about the dogs. Right. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now so you're, we got step one. That, yeah. This is fantastic. So yeah. let's let's tackle this. Yes. Hey, while we're we're talking about this, and while we're we're looking at the needs of animals, take a look at what's going on here too. So so I like it when when we're looking at, at dogs and cats like that. I like it that you like it, and I agree. <laughs> I you got me on. He's so Mister Happy. I love it. Yeah, you have got me on board, Mister. You had me at happy. Okay. Uh, what do you wish you knew ten years ago that you know now? You know a big, uh, you know. A big part of the work that my team does at the Humane Seven United States is to work with the largest food companies on adding plant-based foods. So that colleges, universities, training them yeah. to, to change these dining halls. And, you know, 10 years ago, that wasn't a focus. And, and I regret it. it mm-hmm. I wish it was. I really mm-hmm. wish it was. I, I could have helped make it a focus, and I chose other paths that I'm very proud of the work that we've done. And, and it was tremendous what we did 10 years ago. Yeah. But I think uh, if I could go back in time, I would say, Josh, let's get started sooner. Start huh? working on plant-based sooner. Sooner. Because yeah. we're doing so much now that I think we'd go even further if we started. And sooner. I love how quickly it's growing now, just exponentially. The yeah. world is interested in sort of clean products for themselves and clean food for themselves, which I love about this. Uh, if you could be known for one bit of change in the world, mm. what would that be? Uh, you know, I, I, for as... Any talent that I might be able to bring for animals, I will never be as effective as many people getting involved and being effective themselves. So I hope like, what I can bring is helping so many others bring out their talents for animals because I think that's when we're going to have a lot bigger change for animals when, when more people reach to their potential and or, or feel like the backing of others to, to get there. And he does that. Don't you think he does that? Josh, I think you do a great job of that, of empowering and encouraging others to take whatever step is easy for them to get on the the moving truck. So I love that. That's that's wonderful. And you you. do that. You are already very successful in that, I think. Okay, one last question as we close out. You who are so close to the movement, I'll call it, what are your predictions for the future? And that might be next week, five years from now, ten years ago. I'll open it up. doesn't have to be animals and plant-based, but it sure could be. So just where do you think we're going in the future? I think that plant-based is going to be even more mainstream than yeah. ever before. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think I think we're going to get there. I really do. Uh, I think that uh, you're starting to see the trends right now. Um, but when you but when you begin to look at how grocery stores are shifting, and now they're starting to sell plant-based meat in the meat section. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you know, they're already selling yeah. plant-based milk in in the dairy section. Yeah. They're, they're selling vegan cheese in, in the dairy section, and pretty soon with Just, they're gonna be having plant-based scrambled eggs in the egg section. And so, and, and, Yay. and the fact that this is happening in a mainstream way. I feel like, you know, we're, if we're looking five, ten years down the line, it's going to be completely normal no matter where you are that plant-based is at least going to be part of someone's central diet. Mm-hmm. Maybe not everyone's going to be vegan or vegetarian, but I think most people are going to see like, okay, of course I eat veggie burgers and, and these new plant-based products. And yeah, I mean, I do it maybe like half the meals. That's going to be, I think, mainstream. I also think that we're going to be passing uh, more laws for farm animals. And, uh, you know, in the near future is November election here in California. Let's do it, people. And it happens to be the biggest battle we've ever waged against agribusiness for a law. And so I see that battle happening. I see California voters being inundated with millions of dollars of TV ads paid for by animal agribusiness to encourage people to vote the other way. But I also believe that good people are going to come out. 
and they're going to stand up for the animals. Uh, and with that, I think we're going to win on Election Day. So tell us exactly what we need to do in California on Election Day. So, we, so first, we got to make sure everyone's registered to vote. Okay, do that. Register to vote. You, you, yeah, it's uh, it's an easy process these days. Uh, next, whatever. By the way, I think you can do that just by getting your license in California. Driver's license updated, or yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly right, exactly right. Uh, what I would also do is go to Prevent Cruelty. Uh, I'm sorry, PreventCruelty.ca.com. And go, you go on the Facebook page, go on Twitter, stay up to date on what's going on, because that's when you'll know when there's a, a big events in your area for the campaign. So I think you know to view, your, to view your podcast. I'm sure people are interested. You know, you got in this, you got this big audience. I know. And what we need is for everybody watching is to really get active here, because being on the sidelines is, is not going to cut it for the animals this time around. We really need to to jump in. Okay, so let me be even more specific. What is the name of this thing come November, and how do we click the box? That's, so you, what you is the name? We don't have the number yet. Gosh you know, darn! I know, well, I'll let you know when we do. Yeah, it's going to yeah. happen in about a month. Okay. So we submitted all the signatures we got. Um, I know you've gathered signatures. I did. I was there. Uh, so collectively, yeah. we gathered about 660,000 signatures. So awesome. Rock that, people. Exactly. We, we, can, we can rock it on Election Day, too. We will. And the reason being is because of getting as many signatures as we have. Uh, and so right now, the California government is counting the signatures to make sure we got the required amount, which is 365,000 signatures of California registered voters. Done and we're, done. We're, we're pretty optimistic we got there. So once that is officially counted, uh, we will get a proposition number. Okay. And then we will know exactly the number that we're going to ask people to vote for. Okay. So everybody, we are we have our marching orders. We are in a waiting position until we have that prop number, because as soon as we get that prop number, of course, we're going to vote for the animals. And then until then, we can go to preventcruelty.ca.com. Absolutely. And now uh, you can always hit the two of us up on social media, because we got recipes for you that are super easy, that are going to make your life so easy, not expensive. And uh, you're going to feel so much better. Everybody, thank you for being here. I love having you on Facebook Live. Thank you. And, of course, Josh. Oh, Bob, thank you for having you me. You are just a bundle of joy. Oh, and you're I couldn't so sweet. be happier to thank have you. you on Awesome Vegans. I was honored to be on. Thank what you. Thank you so guy. much, Elizabeth. Thank you for being here. We'll see you later. Bye, folks.